I think that it's a subject that we need to put it in the context of governance because it exposes the weaknesses in the management of sanitation matter. And I was expecting my You mean the subject of the sanitation ministry? Yeah. No, I'm talking about governance because I think I want to broaden the discussion a bit so that you will appreciate the oh. subject matter. And I was expecting okay. my please go ahead with your my statement. My Olida Day colleague to, to deal with it in its five um, uh, issues that he raised. First of all, I think that when we are talking about sanitation, uh, the WHO and the UN definition of sanitation is very skewed. But I would like to talk about environmental sanitation. But tell us what you will do. It's important to put the issues in the context. No, you because know, we know the problems. So. That and we had a whole out. speech on the problems. So, AMA, I'm not going to talk about problems. Yeah, so I think you sense what is coming from I here. I thought I have 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes, go so ahead. So, spare me my 10 minutes. When my 10 minutes is over, then you can stop me. Thank you very much, sir. So, it's important we put the issues in a proper context of dealing with environmental sanitation and not only sanitation. Because when you talk about environmental sanitation, there are complementary issues that brings to the fore. Talking about environmental sanitation, you are talking about solid waste, you're talking about liquid waste, you are talking about drainage system management, you are talking about greening and weeding of grasses and landscaping, you're also talking about management of cemeteries. All these are components of environmental sanitation. And each one of these plays role. Because when you talk about only liquid waste or solid waste, and you don't deal with the issues of drain management, which has been a big issue in this country, then you are tackling one side and you leave the other side. So in, the, in a forum like this, which we have a policy think tank, I think that it's important we bring all the issues to, to bear and start dealing with the issues one by one. If you ask of me what the issues are, one in Accra at the moment, there's an, a, a challenge with collection of refuse. That's a fact. We hadn't failed, but we have challenges, which we all admit. As I speak to you now, we have only one landfill site, which is at home. And when I collect the waste from here, I have to go to Poon. The Poon landfill sites operate like a civil service, 8 to 5 p.m. I collect the waste in the evening, I have to sleep with the waste, and in the morning, I drive through the traffic like any other car to Poon and go and dump it and come. If we start the Poon landfill site 24 hours operation, I can assure you, Mr. Minister, I can assure you, I can assure you that. 50% if you make a note of that his problem 50% right now. of the our waste issues will be dealt with because we tried to collect but disposal is also a very big challenge so when i have to drive from here to boom which is about 90 kilometers return trip and come back that cannot deal with the matter we should also understand that there are jurisdictional matters the poland full site is outside my jurisdiction i don't control the land full site so during the Christmas holidays, I had to go and negotiate with the management on my own. Who, who, who controls it? Who controls of course, it? now we have the Ministry of Sanitation. So I think that the Ministry of Sanitation is it's facilitating that action. But who controls it now? Who controls it now? Now. I'm saying that the Ministry of Sanitation. You control it now? Of course. And you close 9 to 5? Okay. But they are Please go ahead. Sorry, I'll give you extra time. That's what pertained before. We've opened in 24 hours. Okay. Uh, if it open 24 hours, and please excuse us, like I said, we'll be low on protocol. Okay, we need to beat the issues. Is it open 24 hours? Now, now it's open 24 hours. So, Chief, your problem is no longer there. There's a problem with financing. We have to pay them for staying beyond the eight hours they work. But why don't we do it? How much it's, not a, it? it's not his problem. It's our problem. Okay, you, you let him finish. But, Chief, just make a point, you know... Why can't you drive and park there? Why do you have to drive in the morning in traffic? Please go ahead. Because the best time to dispose of your waste is in the evening where there's less traffic. So I have to drive through the traffic. And sometimes you get there, they have clothes. You have to either come back and, 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 and the issues that are associated with it. Number two. We have accepted a model of engaging a private consultant to, or a private company for public cleansing and through the YEA. My information is that due to our indebtedness to them, 
they are also pretending as if they are on the street and we are also pretending as if we are working and you don't can you can't find all of them on the street and for that matter you can see the the streets littered in every street in every street in every city you will find people cleaning the city whether it is clean or not we should be able to find a solution to that problem. You that should be it. able to. I don't control the YE. That's another point. That's why this is, you have to deal with the issues. But you I'm have a with the issue for the city. I'm bringing the issues for you to come to them. Okay. We'll the YE there. is also an agency that does recruitment. They pay them. I don't pay them. If I'm the one who pays them, I will dictate it to them. Quickly. Our fellow just said we don't have systems that can succeed. Do you agree? Well, we have challenges, serious challenges with the system. Accra is not that big. Mexico City is clean. And New I, York City is clean. If you listen to me carefully, I started by talking about governance, which is a management. It's a critical issue that we need to deal with. If we don't deal with the governance matters and cut Accra into a pieces like a pizza where everybody has a slice and is operating within the city, that's the kind of challenge we'll so face. So you don't with. like the YA arrangement? Sorry? You don't like that one? I don't like the why. You sound like you don't like the why arrangement. You don't have any power over them. Of course, I don't have power over them. Good. But the issue comes to be that you are a city mayor and you have to deal with it. But I don't have power over the why. I don't control those of them who pays them. Oh. If I'm the one, if the money is given to me right. to pay them, I will have total control over them. Right. And I think that if the better arrangement in terms of solution is to give the money to the district assemblies so that they can also directly pay them, they have total control over them, and then we can be more accountable to right. the issues. Right. Right. That's your job. Yeah. So you have to work. The third on. issue is about our polluter pay system. Over the years, the city authority concentration has been collection of solid waste from the communal centers. But by 2016, 1st September, we introduced the polluter pay system. That was in the heat of the campaign. So uh, we managed to be able to get um, the companies and then allotted zones to them. So in Accra, we have 15 zones and giving out the contract to 12 companies. So you have Zoom Domestic in charge of Ayawaso West. You have Asadu in charge of um, Ablikuma North. You have Jakura in charge of um, Klote Kole and the rest. But this is a new policy. And I can also attach to the fact that prior to the introduction of policy, our waste collection capacity was around 25%. It has moved to about 75% in terms of collection of household waste. So, with the intensification of the polluter pay system, where we have to encourage the private companies to be able to collect the waste from the household level, will largely deal with the matter. We have challenges with this implementation, but we have to intensify the polluter pay system for the collection of the one day. Please, just on that, please. You are talking about encouraging people to pay for the evacuation of their waste. I don't think there's a problem with that. I pay for the evacuation of my waste. The people don't pick it up. I am saying that. And I that think there I, should be a bylaw so on that. Why is it that? Why is it that when the minister was talking, you allowed, you allowed, you had no allowed? Oh no, don't worry, you are my brother. I, so I, this, is it encouragement or you need to have a bylaw on that? No, what I'm saying so is, is my that. my time now. You come in later. What I'm saying is that the law now is that the polluter must pay for the refuse. So why don't we impose that? We have imposed, but we have challenges with it. The challenge is that. The companies that we have also given out the contract to, which I came to is a five-year contract, some of them do not have capacity. Some of them are also facing. So if you go to like um, Ablokuma West area where you have, you know, another company that is also managing it, people come to complain that the company that is in charge also do not come to collect the waste also over there on time. So these are practical challenges that we have faced. But it is better than before. That is the point I'm trying to say. And I said that that... Um, Prior to the introduction of this policy arrangement, our waste collection capacity was around 25%. Today, we are hitting about 75%. Really? So we admit that there are challenges, but the fact remains that it is, it is better than before. Are they and members of ESPA? Be... Just a quick one. Are they members of ESPA? Of course, yeah. Okay. All of them are members of ESPA, All right. including um, the chairman of ESPA, okay, who is in, also in charge. So that is also a very important matter we need to, to be able to deal with. The fourth issue is about enforcement, which is falls also within the mandate 
of the city authority about enforcement because once you enforce people will also comply the our, our guest speaker alluded to the fact that uh, just about a week ago we started enforcement if you have been perusing the newspapers since i came i've been doing enforcement and people go to court all the time and they are giving hefty fines all the time that has been part of it and if you peruse it you will see it properly we have two sanitation courts in accra at the moment and one also at la one is at abeka and one is at la Tebekoshi. they are not in good shape so we are we we've sourced for funding which we are renovating the courts there's also one which is uncompleted at circle so we are targeted to have five sanitation courts so that these are dedicated courts because when we send issues of this nature to the magistrate courts they have our own technicalities which keeps too long at the sanitation court is kicking ground you come are you the one who, who dump the refuse? You are the one. The judge look at you. He give you a fine. Period. We go. There's no problem with that. Why so we, we have a sanitation oh, court. We I have a sanitation court, which is very, very important. With the, Mr. I, I agree with you. With you. Please, please, just to help you on that. You see, you arrest the person, you detain him, you take the person to court, he's processed. Why can't you have a spot fine system? And if they refuse to pay the spot fine, then you proceed to the next spot level. fine issue. I think that the attorney general have to have to deal with it. There's a there's a big issue of spot fine. The police are looking for spot fine. All of us are looking for spot fine. The attorney general attorney general has you don't have a bylaw for that to support that. I'm telling you that whatever if, well, your bylaw cannot 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 supersede the directive of the attorney general so the attorney general department is working on it so spot fine is a big issue the police are even looking for spot fine issues so that you'll be able to collect it so that i'm sure that will reduce the corruption in the system the other subject also about enforcement is to make sure that at the household level people also have dustbins so once you don't have a dustbin at your house it means that you don't dispose of your refuse properly and we are prosecuting people along the line just a couple of months ago the decongestion has resulted in about a reduction of about 25 to 80 percent of the refuse which is generated within the city center alone because all the people that ply their trade on the streets and the pedestrian walkway also generate a lot of refuse and then in the end they don't dispose it prof properly so once you are pushing the people into the market you have a central point where you'll be able to collect the waste also from there so the enforcement is very important number five is about retooling of the waste management department our waste management department don't have the equipment the truth of the matter to be able to, to go and collect so we are largely relying on the private companies that we have engaged their services on the polluter pay system to also offer some assistance when it comes to communal cleaning or evacuation of refuse but that falls directly within our mandate and it's important that we are able to retool our waste management department so that we can give proper intervention you go to a place like nima typical place like nima and you have central containers the central container i want my the guest speaker was talking, he made reference to the fact that um, when you have central containers, it's an indicative of uh, failure in the system. No, communal that's, Communal, cleaning. of course, that's a central container. You have a central container. No, no. It. We are talking about communal. cleaning with... Communal having, cleaning. Yes. In any case. Civil servants going to clean and the president going to clean. That point. Yes. But when you have it, you have a challenge, like a community like Nima, where you can't find even a space to place your central container for them even to come and dump. So we are forced to place the central container on the Kanda over highway. That's where all of us sit here when we drive our car, we see it. And then we call me, Mayor, the refuse there, the refuse there. But we are unable also to find a space also within the Nima proper for them to also dispose of the waste. These are practical challenges that yeah, we have. You, you However, when we are able to retool and our waste management department, we'll be able to collect the waste also very timely and very, very important. Mm -hmm. These are immediate things that we are supposed to do. I'm talking about now. Mm -hmm. The 24 hours operation at the landfill site, the indebtedness and how to deal with the public cleansing, which is very, very important, the intensification of the polluter pay system and the retooling of the of the of the waste management right. in the medium term 
in city waste management, you can't collect the waste from the city and travel for about 90 kilometers to go and dispose of waste and come. It doesn't make economic sense to even the private collector, let alone even you. The problem. So the setting up or the creation of the transfer stations, which is an intermediary withholding facility that you have a short around time to be able to go and dispose of your waste if you are able to collect it, and then it is your responsibility to also transfer the waste to its final disposal site, which is very, very critical. Currently, there's one at, um, at Achimota, which is owned by a private company, Zoom Park. But sometimes you have issues with the pricing as well over there. But that's very, very important. We need about three in Accra. Once we are able to have these three in Accra, we'll be able to deal with the issue about waste. The main issue in Accra is about collection. And I'm proposing systems that if we put in place, we'll be able to collect it. As for its final use at the landfill site, it's also another matter altogether. Because we talk about Accra. I don't owe the world of Accra. Just a couple of, just about a week ago, I've been able to give him birth to about six municipalities. So, so, I mean, when you get to Ring Road, you cross Ring Road, you have entered into Ayawaso East Municipality, you've entered into Ayawaso North Municipality, Ablikuma West Municipality in Dansoma. So my jurisdiction is being shrink. A lot of people even see issues that in Botiano, and they call me. Your work should be easier then. It doesn't make it easier. The problem is about management and governance. Which is what you are in charge of. And I'm telling you that, for instance, with the enforcement, why do I have to go and recruit young boys for Abaye to go and do when you have the police there? Per LI 2180, mm -hmm. it mandates the police as a body to be in charge of enforcement of all these bylaws. What are your city guards for? No, please, the law gives you. You are the mayor of the city. The police have a job. But when it comes to money, what is the, the police city? job? I'm quoting what the police job is in LI 280. I so can explain have, it. You have to address your mind to. And I'm pushing back on that because, Mayor, yes, sir. Your city guards have a job to maintain the city. The police deal with crimes and things that are pseudo criminal. But when it comes to managing the city, who is working where, selling where, it's that's what your city guards I are. I'm telling for. you what the LI is LI 2180. So, so what are your city we'll guards there for? Then, then let's grab the LI 2180 so that we don't make reference to it. Do you have city guards? I have city guards. What are they for? I have, I have metro guards. They are just a few. We don't have numbers, but the police are there to also support it. And that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why the LI 2180 prescribes that the police should be in charge. So if the police is there and they are not being supportive enough, I think that is important. We bring also that matter to the fore. Somebody should ask him where we get to the discussion, what the city guards are for. The city guards. Mm, you know, when we get there, we'll talk. So go ahead. I'm giving you extra time. Don't. And then it's also important for us in the medium term to have an engineering landfill site. At the moment, the, lo the cone landfill site is only where we go and dump, and they are just spreading it and capping it. But government should, as a matter of agency, and the loan landfill site i'm told that in the next one and a half years it will it will get to full so i am sure that the ministry of sanitation is working hard on it so that we have an engineering landfill site so that when we are able to collect our waste we can be able to deal with the waste either by recycling reusing it convert it to waste to energy or all other things that we are supposed to use the waste for these are very important things that we are supposed to deal with and getting but largely enough in Accra, I can tell you for a fact that since I came, and, and also the issue about liquid waste, we've spoken a lot about solid waste, the liquid waste. As I speak to you today, yes, in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, we recorded cholera outbreak that killed over 200 people and over 20,000. Investment had gone into management and treatment of fecal treatment, fecal matter. And today we have excess capacity of treatment of liquid waste in Accra. Mm -hmm. The Moodle treatment plant is treating over 18,000 cubic meters. The Lavender Hill is treating over 2,000 cubic meters. Slamsin has a, 
that is also treating over 8,000 meters. And this is, when, a, when you combine all, we have an excess capacity of treatment of liquid waste that is Accra waste that is moment. evacuated. And that's a fact I need to put it up. No, that's a good point. Waste that is evacuated. The problem we have is waste that is not evacuated. Open defecation. No, I'm talking about liquid waste. Well, I understand. But so the problem is beyond that. So I'm saying anything about that side too. Yes, I'm, I'm building a point on liquid waste. Okay. Then again on the liquid you waste. You spent 20 minutes actually. So, um, but go ahead. Oftentimes, I mean, often, so please go ahead. Oftentimes, when you have the mayor, all the issues come to him. So I, I understand. Please go Thank ahead. Thank you very much. Now, when you continue on liquid waste, the Accra being ranked as the seventh dirtiest city is heavily weighted on open defecation and not on even solid waste largely and other matters that I speak of. So we need to put that issue also in context and see how we are addressing the, trip, the issue about open defecation so that we can change our ranking. And I think that is important we talk about that one. Today, in Accra and, Ghana, and the Gama area, through the support of the World Bank and being facilitated by the Ministry of Sanitation, we are we are, we are still aggressively embarking on the one household, one toilet policy. When we came to buy, by January 2017, the total cost was around 4,000 Ghana cities. And the beneficiary is supposed to pay 2,000 Ghana cities and has to pay 2,000 Ghana cities. It has been further reduced three months ago to 1,100 and even in the low income communities to 650 Ghana cities. And even with that, if you start paying 50 Ghana cities, we will start constructing for you. And we have built over 400 household toilets within the past three months. We have employed large-scale contractors because either two were using small-scale contractors. We have given contract to large-scale contractors who will build more toilets because the subscription is going high. So each large-scale contractor has been given to, um, to build a minimum of 400 toilets by the close of this month. We how started many have from you built so month. far? Sorry? Since you started, how many have you built so far? Um, I can only, if my memory serves me right, for the past three months, we built 400. You built 400 in three months? Yes. Um, so at that rate, by the end of the year, you should have built like 1,200? That is not the case. And she says, you have oversimplified that. I have said that at that time, we were using small-scale contractors. Uh -huh. Today, we had reassigned it to large-scale contractors to increase the numbers. So you, so, can build so more. you are oversimplifying your mathematics. So you can build and I think more. you admit that as well. Exactly. Good. So, so talking about liquid waste, talking about liquid waste and where we are ranked as a seven dirtiest city and not even largely on solid waste and some other things, this is how we are dealing with. And I'm saying that um, presently as we speak now, we have excess capacity when it comes to the treatment of liquid waste, but we are focusing also on household waste because in the WHO and UNICEF report, when you have a communal toilet, they see it as inhuman and it's, it's not dignified. Mm -hmm. So that's where they also put their weight on and then classify you as the dirtiest city. But we are dealing with this matter in this way so that we'll be able to address some of the issues. So I've indicated to you what the environmental sanitation generally is about. And then I've also explained to you the immediate things that we are supposed to do, the long-term things that we are supposed to do. I've spent some time on um, liquid waste and ex deal extensively with solid waste. I can speak a little bit about cemetery. The cemetery we'll, we'll in Accra, that's that... about it. So let me, let me finish okay. by talking about um, the green impact because there are other aspects that I will talk about when it comes to environmental sanitation. Today, as I speak to you, when the president spoke about Accra being the cleanest city, in my candid view, I think that the president is talking about Accra being beautiful. And that's a key factor in environmental sanitation. So how do I make Accra very beautiful? My candid view is about all our open spaces must be green and landscaped properly. I have designed a program. I have gone out. If there are many CEOs there, they will tell you I have come there to do presentation to them. And I'm soliciting support from the private sector. I can tell you on authority today that there are many banks that have put big money, one million Ghana cities, 
300 Ghana, 300 in the next couple of weeks we are going to launch the Accra beautification project which we're going to green open spaces over here and have a central park also at another place it's a whole project that we can talk about once Thank given you. the opportunity so, so that you will understand where we points, are going a few quick points just to say the two you talk about dustbins and people not having dustbins um i know manasseh has said something about dustbins do you have some of the undistributed dustbins in accra sure i mean i have dustbins you see you, you should also understand the culture and attitude of the people when it's spoken about the behavior. When you place a dustbin, just even here, which we don't have houses, and you can still find people far away from this place to bring their household waste and come and dump into it, it doesn't serve the purpose. Why don't we have it one per household or a few per communal, like, compound houses? Why don't we have that's that? That's what the polluter pay system is addressing. And can I we have that? Add, sorry? Can we have a situation where every household has a dustbin? That is what we are, we are driving at. The What's polluter pay at? system, one of the principles is that you should have a dustbin. And I've said that those who do not have dustbins... Oh, Mayor, we I'll be happy if you just violence. tell me that by the end of this year, every household in Accra will have a dustbin. Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's where we are working towards. That's, that's where we are working towards. No, there's a cost with it. Well, but... The, the cost of not doing that is higher. But the cost, but the, no, uh, well, the minister had his view. But my point is that in our cost element of it, the, the service provider who, is a, who, who collects the weights, mm -hmm. it is mandated also to give the, the dustbins yeah. at a cost to the beneficiary. And then they spread it over a period of time. The challenge that the service providers had uh -huh. is the fact that the household people are also not paying so they are also running a business but so they the, charge the, them for the, collecting the waste right sorry they charge them for collecting the waste yes so but if they don't pay for the dustbin they will not collect the waste in collecting the waste yeah, they but can it's not even money. the dustbin even the waste even the waste there are many houses that are also not paying so that's why our environmental health officers okay. are uh, working when i get to ask please i want something on that but please because of time let's go quickly there is this point that was made here and i think i need to spend a bit of time on it a new fellow said that communal cleaning, this thing about National Sanitation Day, this thing about getting officers, ministers, civil servants, doctors, teachers from behind their desks to come and clean streets and gutters is wrong. It is bad. It's an example of a failed system. Now, let me be clear. It's the position we hold at Imani. And our new fellow just made the point that stop it. Stop it because every time we do that, we underline the fact that we are a people not capable of putting together a core of laborers to clean. The cost of getting a civil servant from behind their desk to go and sweep the streets is very high. And it's an, a, a misapplication of national resources. If you put a doctor in the gutter to clean and he gets typhoid and dies, that's a waste of a lot of money. Presidents have jumped in gutters in this country for 30 years and those gutters are still not clean. Mr. Mayor, the reason why I'm directing it to you and it's general is this. I don't think that as a policy, we as a nation can continue to use communal cleaning as a major strategy for cleaning our cities. And so we think it should stop. I don't know what you think about that. But I want a few minutes of your time to tell me your view of this matter. Well, thank you very much. I, I think that um, it is important for us to realize that the chief executives, the doctors, the professionals are all managing offices, public places, and their houses. If all of us deals with sanitation issues in our respective offices and our houses, I'm sure half of the problem will also be resolved. So, so, so I do not think that it's a waste of time. It's a way of telling them to wake up. That if you if you are a leader and you don't make sure that your surrounding is clean, then you will be compelled to go and clean your I area. Differ, I that differ on important. that, and that's why we are here today. And when we get to the discussion, you can let us know what you think. My job in my house 
is to make sure I have a waste bin and I put my waste in it. Your job is to arrange for it to be evacuated and I pay for it. The chief executive's job is to make sure there is a waste bin in that office where properly waste is put. And your job is to arrange the evacuation. It is not my job as a lecturer, not my job as vice president of Imani or as a lawyer to leave my work and go and sweep the street. I think I pay you taxes. I think I pay what I need to pay. My hourly rate is not the same as the hourly rate of a laborer. I don't think this country has a lack of people who can go and clean streets. And your job Go is to arrange for them to do it. Go so I can do Go my job. Go don't, don't oversimplify the matter. No. I think that, no, but we are on the foot. I just don't oversimplify the matter. The point I'm trying to stress is that I largely agree that once you are a professional, you should be doing your work at that level. But it is your duty to make sure. And when you spoke about organizational management, how does the leader of that organization ensure that its offices and the environment is clean? And I'm saying that the directive, it is not to say that you should leave your hours that you have expensive hours to come and do with it but if you are failing as a leader to be able to ensure that the laborers are doing their work then you'll be directed to go and do but it you are so the one directing the laborers is is to ensure that the job of the chief executive of british council is not to clean the street it is to make sure this perimeter is clean I've you get them out to clean streets and gutters and the point we are making is that we've been doing it for 30 years we don't have a solution tell me one city in the world where their main strategy for cleaning the city involves i have never going seen, to i have never said communal labor. and i do not subscribe to the view that it's a strategy of making a clean. never have i said so but we've been and doing i will never for years. and i'll never subscribe to that 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 is the way to clean a class when i spoke about immediate issues i outlined all the immediate issues i thought that you should be dealing with those immediate issues that i have outlined as the things that if we do we'll be able to deal with the sanitation matters if do we have, have enough laborers, have wrong, do we have enough laborers to clean uh, i'm afraid i have to jump in here okay please indeed i advise the directive to go out to to do some cleaning in the ministerial enclave this is perhaps following up from what has happened in the past it was supposed to be symbolic. Symbolic. And to tell the story or give the indication to all the leaders of the agencies where they are uh -huh. that you are responsible for the cleanliness of your environment. But that's wrong. We have also, let me make my point. Right or wrong, let me make the point. Okay. We have also indicated and requested all government agencies to have two officers uh -huh. the sanitation marshal, the deputy sanitation marshal, uh -huh. who oversee the cleanliness of their environment. If you have contracted any service provider who is going to be cleaning your place, whether within the ministries, the toilets in the ministries, or in the premises within the ministry, those two officers, sanitation marshal, uh -huh. deputy sanitation marshal, should make sure it's been done. What we did last Friday uh -huh. was simply to get us out there and show the way, through leadership by example, that this is what should happen. Good. It doesn't Come mean there's going to be an ongoing process. Bear in mind also that we're just beginning the process of awareness creating, getting everybody to do the right thing. Okay. If it catches on, if everybody does what they're supposed to be doing in their house like you're doing, mm -hmm. as a lecturer in your place of work, mm -hmm. at the end of it all, there's no need for anybody to go out and clean. A and if they're also being paid adequately and regularly on time, I'm you. talking about ESPA, they will come and collect and dispose of it. I and we you. as government, if we're able to collect the waste and send it where it should be sent to, where it's being processed, mm -hmm. and there's no landfill sites, and that's the policy so of government, here, there's no landfill right. site, that will not come on. So bear in mind that we're just beginning the process of Getting everybody you on board talked about what this they need is to do. symbolic. Where yes. is the substantive? Substantive is the long term matter of getting everybody to the be on board. The bet is coming on tomorrow. Well, you have, but we are on this matter. Number two. The substantive minister. involves many things that Hold we just talked about. I hear you. Us, Government, can, can I ask you a question? About lack of can I ask a question? You have been talking. Let us explain for people oh, to understand explain. what is going on. I just on. want to make a I'm point. I'm not for substantive. I gave you three indications of policy direction. Okay? Yeah, you talked about management. I've not gone into the details of that. Okay, here my question. lack of capacity. Here my position The new now. trucks. The policy is that 20% of the waste must be evacuated by the assemblies. They have no trucks to be able to do that. All, Government all, has worked on that quick impact resource to get some of those equipment available for them to be able to do that. The service providers, ESPA, most of their trucks are broken down. They go in and bring what we call home use trucks from Holland and other places. I hear you. Please. Government has packaged some we'll, credit facilities. We'll get to it. Bring that on board. Just a few more no, points. Let's look at substantive results. Okay. It's not a matter of just asking questions and send it back. Let them understand what we're doing. Short term, 
quick impact results, medium term, long term, plans are all there. Government has announced through the president that we have we change the regime of making sure that we're able to provide some credit facilities for the service providers to be able to bring in the equipment, the trucks, what is required for them to function effectively. Okay. That has never been done before. Okay. We've had credit facilities for agriculture, for health. We've never had for sanitation. Okay. That is a policy decision by I government. I hear you. Now, here's the issue. The problem of sanitation in Accra has nothing to do with cleanliness of offices. It has everything to do with the cleanliness of the streets and the gutters. If you talk about people cleaning their office, we don't have a problem with that. I will so you say we don't have a problem. No, you go I'm to the so. No, you go Hold to on. So you hear me too. Hear me too. Hear it's me part too. of the problem. Hear me too, I beg. Yes. But if you say there's oh, no problem, oh. I don't agree with you on that. All right. It can be the case. I... Mr. Moderator. Yes. I don't know why I have my session. I have no. indicated to you. Hang on a bit. Hang on a bit. I have indicated to you basic <laughs> steps that we are supposed to do immediately. Immediate 10 steps that we are supposed to do. I have given you even a whole lecture on environmental sanitation. You are not dealing with the substantive matters. We'll deal with it. You, but you have spent too much time dealing uh, okay, with the I'm very symbolic here. matter. At this but point, I'll let Manasseh speak. So thank you very I'll, much. Azure.